to see everybody today for Fifth Sunday potluck. The food. It's all about the food. But I just want to welcome everybody here. Um, thanks for coming. I'm Pastor Kelly. Everybody who's uh, joined me online, I just finally forgot. Sorry. <laughs> just forget things. But um, man, I just want to. Today's good. Today's good. We're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna do some church, have some church, and after that, we're gonna go down and eat. Because I know everybody, after they get done and after they've been here for a couple hours, they're probably hungry. I can hear some people's stomachs growl. So I'm gonna, we're gonna feed you today. <laughs> um, I just wanna, I wanted to tell you that me and Catherine went to this, we went to this conference in Emily City. Raise your hand if you know where Emily City's at. Okay. Um, we got invited. Um, I got invited. I was at some, I don't know, I was somewhere. Somebody asked me if I'm going to come somewhere. I said, I guess. So I'm glad I went. Um, it was a conference for pastors. It's called Equip. And uh, it's at Gateway Church. Uh, his, the, the pastor there, his name is Jeff Christ. Raise your hand if you know, if you've heard of Jeff Christ. I've never heard of the man before, too, before I went there, but now I know who he is. But um, it's a it's a conference for pastors, and they basically go there and they get they, it's other pastors, and we talk about things, we work through things, and we learn things, and we eat a lot of food, and <laughs> it's a lot of good stuff. But um, it was really refreshing, you know, because I try to pour out onto you guys, but it was good to be poured into. I just needed that, and I feel refreshed. My spirit feels refreshed. But I did want to I did want to tell everybody here that um, you know they like to uh, gateway does things with excellence. They man, it, it's it's all about excellence there. And and before we left, and I didn't even know this was going to happen, they said all the pastors come up with the wives, whatever. We went up there, and they said we want to pray for you. And he said, you know what, we have a blessing for you. And I said, okay, well, good. You know, it's always good to get blessings. And they gave our church a five hundred dollar check. Amen. Nice, five hundred dollars. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it back there when you know, like when the counters count. But I just want to let everybody know that we have five hundred dollars from Gateway. They wanted to bless our church. That's awesome. And thanks, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Nate and Pastor Angelo Fleece. I don't know if you heard of him. I met some good pastors, some crazy pastors. We had a good time, a lot of laughing. So it was good. So, all right, today our discernment today is called time out. Time out. And, you know, one of the things, you know, God put this on my heart. You know, you know what the thing, funny thing about it is it's like God already told me what he wants me to preach about next Sunday already. I talk to pastors and sometimes they're just, I'm just like, hey, you, you done with your sermon? Oh, man, I, I, don't, I didn't get anything. God's always talking to me, so I'm always listening. I'm always trying to um, jot, down, jot things down, but he's already given it to me. But today's sermon is called Time Out. But, um... You know, we live, we, live in a, we live in a society, we live in a nation, in a world, especially in America, where everything's about output. Everything's about um, output. It's about getting things done. It's about the product. It's about the hustle. And, and a, lot, a lot of times, you know, it's just like, you know, we, we, we're ingrained from a young age. You know what? Get things done, Johnny. Get things done, Joe. You know, because if you do things, you're going to get a reward. You'll get a candy bar or a sucker. You know, little kids, you can, little kids will work hard for Snickers, what they, but we, we, we're just, we're taught at a young age to always, it's about output, it's about output, it's about, it's like a production line, it's just like, you know what, you got to do this, get this, everything done in this amount of time, is that right, you feel that at ever? You know, and I, we get paid to do things, obviously, yes, we do, but we have this, this, this ideology about output embedded into our spirit. When we ask people, what do you do today? That's all, it's about output, right? What did you accomplish? Did you get all your goals done? Did you, did you, if you're married, did you, did you get your honey to do list done? Because you know it's never done. But somewhere in, in, in embedded in this concept of output is the fact that, you know what, we, we forget to take time out. We forget to, we, we're always outputting, but we, we sometimes we forget to input. We forget to take a break from life. Because life is busy. Isn't it life busy? I'm, I'm sure if I went up to anybody, you, any of you, and you ask you, what are some things you got to get done? I'm sure you could name them off just like, woo, 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 woo. It was just, you would name them off. Because 
Life is about output. But we, we fail sometimes to actually input. We fail to, to, to receive. Because we're always, we're conditioned to give, we're conditioned to, to pr produce, and we're not, we, we have a trouble sometimes receiving. And today, I just want, I want to talk about this, this thing, about, about receiving, about taking the time out, because often in life, we need breaks in life. We need to, we need breaks from, we need breaks from people, we need breaks from our job, we need breaks from, um, from life, that's when we take vacations, right? You take vacations because we need a break from life. Because I need to get away from my life because I'm going to kill somebody or I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> but we, 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 we're always, we're, all, we're, we're so output um, focused that we, we fail to take time out. And we also, we, we, we fail to take time out with God. God is trying to take, God is trying to get our attention at times. He's trying to talk to us, but we're so busy doing so many things that we don't hear him. And we say, God, where are you at? What is your will for this situation? And he's, he's told you 45 times already, and he's telling you the 46 times, but you haven't taken a time out in life, right? So this is what this sermon's about. It's about time out. It's about taking time out for God. It's about taking time out to listen to the creator of the universe. We think we have problems sometimes. We have things in our life that he wants us to, he wants us, we, have, we want answers for, and he's telling us we're not listening to him. We're not just taking enough time out of our life. We're not carving time out in our life to hear him and listen to him, right? I want to show you a picture right now. It's a, it's a time out here, a little kitty cat. A time out, the perfect time for thinking about what you're going to destroy next. I thought it was kind of funny because it's like, I, I can see dogs and cats and stuff like that. Sometimes you're like, get over there, you're being a bad boy. And they're over there and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm going to be chewing on that slipper later. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, at the cat, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, climb the curse, I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to get up on that, on, on your, on your table, I'm going to eat that pack of rolls. So. You know, sometimes I do think about this is what pets do when they get in trouble. They, they're basically, they're, they, they do something bad and we basically say, beat it. Get out of here, Fluffy. Get out of here, Ren Tin Tin. And we're basically giving them a time out. That's what we're doing. We're giving them a time out. And why do we do, why do we give, why do we give our kids, uh, raise your hand if you give your kids a time out. Okay. And why do we do this? Because we hope, everybody say hope. We hope that they will think about what they just done. You go over to the corner and think about it. Because you know moms don't get mad because you just roll over her wall with marker. So you better go over here and think about it because when mom gets home, she's going she's gonna to get you. But we tell them, we hope, we, we, we give them a time out because we hope they think about what they did because what they are doing is naughty. They do not, because kids do naughty things. I'm sorry, but adults do naughty things too, don't they? We do sometimes we do naughty things. We do things that we shouldn't do. The point of a timeout is to take a break from what's going on. That's the that's the whole premises of a timeout. And parents do it with their children. And uh, and uh, raise your hand if you if you were if you if your parents gave you a timeout. You don't like it, do you? You don't like when your parents give you a timeout because it's, it's, it's like none of us like timeouts. It's, it's like, okay, I have to take a timeout in life. I got to take a break from what I'm doing. I'm playing with my Tonka toys. I'm playing with my GI Joes. And, I'm, and I, I, I don't want to take a timeout, Mom. We scream about it. We, we, scream at our, we, we get mad at our parents because we have to walk away for something that you're doing, right? That's what a timeout is. And I don't remember, I remember growing up, it's like, um, and, and sometimes, you know, timeout, timeouts are not always, they don't, they don't always have a negative connotation. Sometimes they're good, it's, it's good for you. Because I remember growing up as a kid, uh, playing outside all day, and after that, just not eating. <laughs> I'd be outside 14 hours, and I wouldn't even eat anything. I might, I think I'd drink some water from the holes. And that's all, that would be my whole, like, my whole dinner, or lunch, or breakfast, whatever. So, you know, you have to take time off seat. You know, we, we talked, we, we, were, we had that conference we went to, you know, uh, a pastor didn't eat and he had, ended up having a medical situation and his wife was just like, you know, you know what, I'm going to bring a banana, I'm going to give you 
this banana, you're going, you're going to eat it before service on Sunday because you didn't eat on Sundays. It's crazy. You know, and, and timeouts are needed for good things. They're also needed for safety. You know, when, when, you're, when you're a kid and you're outside and the heat is coming down on you and blasting you and you're just like, you know what, you can get heat stroke. You can get a severe burn. How many people have ever had a, a, a suntan that's burned to you? You look like a lobster. And like you, you walk around stiff like this because you don't want, you, you can't even, your clothes and stuff, when they touch you, you cringe. So that, you know, so timeouts are needed for safety. Because if you're not careful, you know, things can cause injury or even death, right? If, you don't, if, you, if you're not careful in life, because, you know, I like to think that everybody here is careful, but sometimes we, we're not always careful, are we? Sometimes, you know, we just, you know, we, 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 there's a mouse trap and we, we're like, okay, I'm going to go change it. It's still seven stuff. So I'm going to put my finger on the trigger. Okay, you got a broken finger. But in, but in Genesis chapter four, we see the reality of death from not taking any time out. In Genesis chapter four, in Genesis chapter four, we're introduced, if when you read the Bible for the first time, we're introduced to Adam and Eve's son, Cain and Abel. We know, we know those two popular characters, don't we? Cain and Abel. And I'm, I, don't, I would imagine that they're typical brothers who used to mess around. You think so? Raise your hand if you had a brother that you used to mess around with. Raise your, raise your hand if you had a sister you messed around with. Okay. But you know what? Typically, siblings mess around with each other, don't they? They're always doing things to each other. You, know, you walk by your sibling, you thump him in his head. <laughs> or you give him a wet willy. You know what a wet willy is? You get your finger wet and you stick it in his ear or her hair. <laughs> so, we, you know, those are things that, those are things that, like, siblings do. You know, they do lots of things. They do lots of crazy things. Um, but on this particular day, it got heated. You know when somebody takes a little bit too far? Because what really, to me, is it's like, that's a little too far. I don't want your saliva in my, my ear. I'm saying, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll punch you. My brother's name's Sean. I'll punch you, Sean. <laughs> but it got heated this day. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. All right, starting with verse 1. Now, Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. And when she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. And when they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. Verse 3. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented, presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Verse uh, 4. Abel also brought a gift, the best portions of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel in his gift. Right there, that's the beginning of the, that's the, beginning of, the, of, the, of, the of the bad story. He accepted Abel in his gift. Have you ever, have you, we, all, you know, it, sound, it sounds like most of us have brothers and sisters. And have, has your brother or sister ever um, got something like, uh, you know, just um, something good happened to them or they did something and something good happened to them? Does that happen to you? Lord accepted Abel in his gift. The mom accepted, like I'm saying, you have a mom and she accepted um, your brother or sister's gift. But verse 5 says, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. Hey, mom, mom, I, I, I'm saying I, I, I made something for you for Christmas too. But why is it always in the, why is it always in the, the closet? <laughs> you know, I made you a Christmas ornament. Why is it always in the closet every year? Isn't it going to get on the tree one, one, one time before, you know, before I move away? <laughs> but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked dejected. Cain got all butt hurt and pouty. And you know, you know what I'm talking about when you get butt hurt and pouty. Um, pouty. You know, there's times in our life where we feel slighted. Have you ever felt slighted before in life? Come on, man. Why? Why didn't? Why, why is it? Why? Why did it happen to me? It happened to them. It didn't happen to me though. And it causes, it causes frustration. It causes anger. And if you don't deal with it, it builds up. It builds up, it builds up, it builds up. Then you get to, and you got to be careful when it builds up because when it builds up big enough, something bad is lurking around the corner, right? That's how it was for Cain and Abel. 
Cain got mad, he got angry, and it was building up, and, and it was building up, and he, you know what? And it's like, if you let things build up and stuff, they gotta get released somehow. That you got, that's why you have to have a release for your stress. You can't walk around life always stressed, because you know what? Eventually, you're gonna, you're gonna punch somebody, you kick somebody, you're gonna say something bad to somebody close to you, probably. Amen. That's what's gonna happen. And this is what happened with Cain. Cain got all beefy with his brother. But he took it and he, 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 he didn't deal with it right. And verse 6 says, why are you so angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? Why do you look so sour? Why do you, why, if, if, looks, if a looks could kill, you would kill, already kill the whole village. Verse 7 you will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you like a puppet. But you must subdue it and be its master. God was trying to give Cain a timeout because he needed it. Cain needed a timeout. Cain got upset about his offering because his offering was rejected and it got him mad. And there's times in our life where we need time out, just like Cain. And you hear people say things. You hear it in their voice. You hear it in their body language and stuff. You know, when somebody talks to you and their hands are all like this and stuff, and they're just like, man, you know what? You know those fists are like comes for a reason. They're, they're going to um, end up on somebody's face <laughs> or somebody's right in somebody's nose. So, you know, there's times in life that we just need time. We need timeouts because of anger, because, and can't need one because of rejection. And, this, and these are times we have to move on and let it go. We have to let it go. Everybody say, let it go. Let it go. You got to say, let it go. Because if you don't let it go, it's going to kill you or kill somebody else. You know, and, and, and the thing about it is that the truth, the truth about rejection is that we all deal with it. We all deal with rejection. Raise your hand if you've never dealt with rejection. I didn't think of no one's hand would go up because everybody has dealt with rejection. It's like one of those things that everybody, it's common to everybody. You know what? We have more commonalities with each other than we have uh, differences. You know that? The devil wants you to think that you don't have that... What, what you're going through, what you're dealing with, is, is, it, it's just you. You're the weirdo. You're the weirdo who has the issue, the problem. No, we all have things that we go through. We all have commonalities that are, we just don't talk about them. Sometimes you don't want to go tell people all your junk, do you? You tell people your junk that you feel safe with, right? They're going to go um, broadcast it on Facebook. Hey, look at me. But you know what? But we've all faced rejection. We've all dealt with it. Jesus dealt with rejection. Does that make you feel better? Jesus dealt with it. He's fully God. We're fully human. God was, and Jesus was God and fully human. So it's okay. Rejection is part of life. I want to change. I want to turn to Matthew ten fourteen. This is about rejection. If any household. All right, household or town, Lansing, Grass Lake, Jackson, Midland, East Tawas, Houston. <laughs> if any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake it stuff off from your feet as you leave. Shake it off. Just shake it off. I want everybody right now, I want you to say, shake off the dust. Shake off the dust. That's what you got to do. That's what you have to do when people reject you. When they refuse to hear what you have to say, they refuse to listen about the message. Because there, there's going to be times where, there's going to be times where we sense a need. The need is real. And we do what we're supposed to do. Because God tells us to go look for opportunities to tell people the good news. 
And there's going to be opportunities. There's going to be opportunities in front of us, but there's also, also going to be that thing called rejection. They're going to reject you. But you always have to remember that rejected Jesus, so they're probably going to reject you. Amen. So don't get discouraged. Wipe it off your feet, wipe it off your shoulder, and say, okay, I'll look for the next opportunity. But the thing about it is Cain couldn't shake off the dust. He couldn't shake off the dust. He got caught up in, the, in his emotions, and they ran him. Emotions are powerful things. Emotions are like fire. You can let it burn you down, or you can let it burn for you. And I feel that this is true for us. I feel this is true for us. I feel like sometimes I feel that our emotions run us and they get, get us in bad situations. Situations that we're not supposed to be in, but we let these emotions get to us. And now we're, we're, we're thick in some craziness. <laughs> They're thick in craziness. Arguments in harsh words could be avoided if we would just walk away. Amen. Just walk away. This is the reason we need timeouts in our life. Amen. Timeouts in our life. There are moments in life where our hearts feel like punching and kicking and murdering someone. I feel like I'm pretty sure this is what happened with OJ. He got caught up in the emotion, and if you know what he did, they didn't prove himself, but I'm sure he killed his wife and this other person. You know what I'm saying? He let emotions take out, take, um, override his thinking, override his morals and values, because that's what happens with emotions. They override your ability to think rational, right? Then you end up doing stupid things. And the thing about I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna look at focus on murder, but because because Cain killed his brother, you may not actually do it. You may not actually murder somebody, but the Bible says there's no difference between thinking it and doing it. Do you understand that? If you want to murder somebody with your heart, it's just like put, taking a knife to somebody's head and stabbing them. Do you understand that, right? I want to turn to Matthew five twenty one. Thing with Cain, he did it. He went all the way. He was the OG. He's up in prison. Now he's got, you know, he's, he was up in prison doing his thing. But just, but we have to remember that just thinking about doing something like that is just as bad as doing it. Matthew 520, 521 says, you're familiar with the command to the ancients. Do not murder. I'm telling you that anyone who is so much as angry with a brother or a sister is guilty of what? What? Murder. Anyone who is, is so much as angry with a brother or sister is guilty of murder. I'm not gonna lie. I like to be. I like to be transparent. I've murdered people. Have you murdered people? I didn't. I didn't do it literally. I did it with my heart. And the truth is that murder starts in the heart. God knew that Cain had murder in his heart towards his brother and tried to give him a time out so he would think about it and make a change. That's why Cain needed, he needed a time out. And God said, you know what? Sin is crouching at your door. Take a time out, man. Because I know what's going to happen. We're going to have the, we're going to have the first funeral. In the same God that was speaking to Cain, trying to get him to take a, take a time out, speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. I want to turn to John 16, and we're going to be in a couple verses, starting with verse 8. John 16, verse 8, then we're going to go to 13b. Verse 8 says, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. I think many times that the Holy Spirit tells us not to do it, but we do it anyway. 
because of rejection, because of anger, because of, you know, because we're mad. We're mad as a, what is a hornet, right? That's what they say. So the Holy Spirit is coming to convict the word of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. You know, we have no, we have no reason, not, we have no reason. You know, God has given everything that we need. We're, we are equipped to live this life that we're living right now. Holy Spirit, we have Jesus in our heart. We have God, right? I want to go to John. I want to know. I want to read John um, 16, 13b. And when the, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. He will tell, he will guide you into truth that you shouldn't kill your brother, that you shouldn't smack your wife, that you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't do lots of things. Or you should do things. You should, you should talk to that person, that you should pray for that person, right? That's what the Holy Spirit does. God gave us the Holy Spirit to guide us. We all go, we're all going, we all go places every day. So that applies to all of us, to guide us, to comfort us. We have, we have emotions, we have things that make us sad and make us happy, right? But he, the Holy Spirit comforts us in our times of need, right? And also to help us in times of heated situations so we don't go crazy and we're not in Channel 6 News. Oh, he shot that person seven times in his heart. That's the truth, though. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. And, and, and it's these situations where the Holy Spirit is saying, leave, remove yourself from that atmosphere because I know what you're going to do. Because none of us know what we're capable of. Let's just be honest with that. And stuff like that. None of us know what we're capable of. We say that we want to murder somebody, but we really don't know. We just, so many times in life, we just need a time out. And I believe that a time out can be the difference between your destiny or your detour for yourself or others. Amen. I want to read, I'll read it one more time. I believe that a time out can be the difference between your destiny or your detour for yourself or for others. I want to turn to, I want to, right now I want to turn to uh, Genesis chapter 15. I don't know why we're in Genesis all the time. That's where God led me. That's all I can do. <laughs> we're going to be in Genesis 15. In this chapter, God made a covenant with Abram. Covenant with Abram. And God promised that he would have many descendants. Many descendants. All right. We're going to be in Genesis uh, chapter 15, starting, or we're going to be in verse 5. It says, then the Lord took Abram outside and said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. He knew he couldn't because he knew he couldn't because it was a bunch of stars. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm done. That's how many descendants you will have. He's going to have a lot of descendants. You know, God made a covenant with Abraham, with Abram. You know, and, and, and as we learn, as, as you learn, I'm, I know you, I know we know this right here, as we learn over and over again from a young age to like whatever age you are right now, God's promises never go void or expire. So if God said something to you, it's going to happen. It might not happen right now on your clock, on your watch, but it's going to happen because nothing goes void, nothing, is, nothing expires. If God said it's going to pass, it's going to pass. But, you know, we, we, we don't always, however, we don't always believe this, so we try to make things happen on ourselves in our own power, and we get in trouble. God didn't say it was time to get married. God didn't say it was time for this or that, and we try to play God. And that's what Abram's wife did. She tried to play God. She needed a time out like Cain, but it didn't happen. All right, let's, we're going to be in Genesis. I'm sorry, this time, Genesis uh, chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. Genesis 16, uh, uh, verses 1 through 4. We're going to start with verse 1. 
Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had not borne him any children, and she had an Egyptian maid whose name was Hagar. All right, we see a dilemma. We see a problem, a problem right there. All right, you're going to have to send it to Abram. I'm not pregnant. I'm getting old. Verse 2, so Sarai said to Abram, see here, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. She didn't, he didn't prevent her. It wasn't the time. The time it wasn't right. I'm asking you to go into the bed of my maid so that she may bear you a child. Perhaps I will obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to Sarai and did as she said. Lots of things going on in this right here. Um, Abram, obedience, descendants, promises, not belief, unbelief, taking it in my own hands. That's what happened. This is what's happening right now in this, this, this situation right now. God had promised Abraham, um, Abram many descendants, and his wife is making a proposal, a proposal opposite of God's covenant. Don't do that. If God said something's going to happen, I don't care if it's your wife or whatever. You need to, you need to be, you know, don't, don't be rude to her. But you know what? We're not talking about this. <laughs> don't tell her to shut up because I'd be rude. <laughs> well, I'm saying, but you have to just, you got to, you have to, you, you have to remember that, like I said, God's promises never go void or expire. But it seems like to me, it seems, I don't know if it seems like to you, but it seems like to me that Abram should have stepped into the situation and be the leader that men are supposed to be and say, hold on, wifey. God told me that we're going to have some kids, so you need to relax and take a time out or a T.O. It seems like that to me, that's what, he, that's what I would have happened. But it didn't. It didn't. Let's go to verse 3. After Abram had lived, um, after labor, Abram, Abram had lived in the land of Canaan 10 years. That's only a decade, man. Come on. 10 years is like, it's like, man, our life is like a vapor. 10 years is like nothing. You know what I'm saying? Abram's wife, Sarai, took Hagar, the Egyptian maid, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his secondary wife. She's not the first wifey. She's a secondary wifey. Sarai got impatient. Sarai had disbelief. Enter her spirit. They were waiting 10 years and she couldn't take it anymore. God's, although God's promises never go void or never expire, we have to be patient. We have to realize that, you know what, they're going to come to pass. But, but like Sarai, she took control of the situation and tried to get a baby the best way she knew. She tried to, uh, God was like, you're going to go down this road. And, and she tried, and she said, you know what, no, God, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. I'm going to take a detour, and we're going to get that baby. We're going to get that kid. But everybody say Consequences. There's always consequences to every choice. Verse four, he went into the he went into the bed of Hagar and she conceived, because we know that happens. And when she realized that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her on her mistress. Regarding Sarai is insignificant because of her infertility. What is this saying? What is this saying? Sarah, Sarai's plan backfired. It backfired on her. And Hagar got prideful. Look at you. You can't even give your, your husband a baby. I can do it. And because I do it, I'm better than you. No, Hagar's not better than you. You know what? Hey, you're just, you, just, you just got written down in this book as being somebody who um, is an example of unobedience. That's what, you know, Hagar, because, you know, that, and, and that's the thing, you know, Sarai, Sarai, um, you know, she took it into her own hands and she used, she, she used Hagar to get something that she needed, that she wanted, right? That's what she did. She used, she used Hagar. 
and she lorded it over her. We see that sometimes in people. It's like, you know, somebody does something and they lord it over other people. That's not what God, you know, and that's not, that's not what God, first of all, pride is, pride kills things, kills relationships, kills, it kills um, families, it kills churches. You can't, we're not called to be prideful. We're called to do, to be obedient. But the thing about it is that all this happened with Sarai and Abraham because it's because they failed to take a time out. They failed to wait 10 years. Well, I guess, I don't know if it's, well, 10 years, she finally said, I'm done with this. But she, it, it took her, she failed to wait on the, the promises of God because they got impatient. And the outcome for Hagar in the valley, we know this, Hagar and her son, Ishmael, were booted out into the wilderness. Poof. It was like one of the first punts, field goals. They got booted. You know, and, and, and this is the thing. At times in, in life, your failure to take a time out affects others. It, it affected Hagar and Ishmael. God says to stop, and you go for it anyway, because you don't want to listen, because you're hard-headed. Like I tell the kids when I used to teach, I'm like, get the dirt out your ears and listen, because you're not listening. And if, and if you don't listen to what God Tell, tell, told you to do or is telling you to do, you're never, it's never going to turn out good if you do this. It's never going to turn out good. It didn't turn out good for Cain and Sarai and countless others that I'm sure that we could probably tell people. We, could, we probably know people that didn't listen to God and bad things happened because they didn't take a time out. And they didn't embrace what God has told them to do, right? Amen. Amen. Everybody say, if God says I need a time out, I'm going to take a time out. All right. All right. We're going to close now here in a minute, um, a couple minutes. But I'll, before we go, I want to leave you with four benefits of timeouts. Four benefits of timeouts. These are just random things that, that God, I feel like God put on my heart to, to share with everybody, share people, everybody on, on, online. Um, so I'm going to share them with you. So first benefit of timeout. Timeouts can help calm you. Timeouts can help calm you. So timeouts allow you to step out of the situation and reestablish control of your feelings. This is what Cain failed to do. He didn't step out of, his, out of the situation enough to get his feelings under control, and his feelings took the best of him, and he killed his brother. At times, you, you hear people say, you know, I, the feelings got the best of me. I did something stupid. I did something I shouldn't have done. I created, I caught, I, 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 I uh, committed adultery. I, I, I committed murder. I lied. I stole. I, I, I kicked. I punched or whatever. It's because you, they let people let their, they don't embrace timeouts. And they let things take control of them, like feelings and emotions. And... And we have to, we have to, we have to be able to, we want it to be composed. You know, some people think like, well, you know, alcohol and drugs inhibit your ability to, to control yourself. They do. But also, if you, you know what, they're, they're no different than just like having feelings are out of control. If you think about it, if you're walking around with anger all the time and stuff like that, you're just as likely to do something bad to somebody or do to have something bad happen to you if you're on, in, under the influence of drugs or alcohol. We have to we have to realize this. We have to live like this and live out of this this out, out of this heart position. Timeouts can help call can help calm you, and they do because I know every time I put some a, a child in my classroom in a timeout, they came back differently. They didn't, they weren't, they weren't doing things. They weren't smacking kids or throwing spitballs at kids. They, they got their self under control. They took a big breath, breath. Oh, five minutes. All right, I'm good. And we, sometimes we have to do it too as adults. It doesn't really matter. We all get mad. We all have feelings and stuff though. So this, I think, I feel like this, 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 this word, this message is for everybody. Yeah. All right. Number two, the second benefit of timeouts is timeouts give you time to think. They like uh, timeouts allow you to think about your the, about the consequences, rather good or bad, of your decisions. 
Making quick decisions when you're, especially when you're angry, are bad. They would, they can lead to murder, like it did with Cain. And the vice versa, you can even when you, um, even when you are very happy or very hungry, what do you do? You go to the store and you buy five hundred dollars worth of groceries. Because I'm hungry. But you have, you have to have time to think. You gotta do, you gotta do things and give yourself enough time to make the correct decision, the, the best decision. If you're hungry, if you're mad, if you're sad, if you're happy. Because, you know what, and there's, there's people that, that prey on people like that. Like when your emotions are high, you do things that you probably wouldn't do. And people know this stuff. Friends and family members and stuff. All right, Chuck, let me, Chuck, you feel good today. Let me borrow $500. Okay, here. Woo. You know, then, and then, but Chuck, then Chuck forgets the fact that, you know what, you know, last time I gave him $500, I didn't get five cents back. So time outs give you time to think. Number three, timeouts give you time before you speak. Timeouts give you time to think about what you're going to say. And this helps you, and I, and I know everybody's done it, it helps you not put your foot in your mouth. Because everybody in this, I know, I know everybody, I know I know myself and stuff, I know what the, the, the taste of foot um, uh, tastes like. And everybody, I, I believe everybody knows what the taste of foot um, tastes like. And it doesn't taste like chicken. But it, it gives you time to think about what you're going to um, you make a, you know, a, a detailed um, think about things and just and just in deep put it. You know, you, if you need to write it down, you can write it down. If you need to, um, you know, if you need to whatever you need to do, prepare for something. But you, if you don't want to say something that you regret. You don't want to walk around with that nasty taste of foot in your mouth all day or your whole life. Because there's people that have said things to people and they're never going to get it back from them. Or never be, going to be able to get that, that taste of foot out your mouth because they're not here anymore. Yeah. Those last words before death are powerful. Yeah. You, don't want to, you, don't want to, you don't want to say something to somebody, I hate you. <sighs> and they died. That would be really, that would be really, you'd walk around with condemnation probably for a long time. I think that, and I, and, I, and I know people. I know people that they they haven't thought before they said something, and, it, and, it, and it's, it's like they, and to this day, they cannot get broke. They cannot get a break a breakthrough from what they said. They're still living with it. It kills them. It's like a cancer. So, timeouts can help you deal with that. And number four, last one, timeouts invite God into the situation. The Bible says Jesus often went off by himself to spend time with the Father. Jesus knew the importance of timeouts. He didn't call them timeouts, but that's what he was doing. It was, he was taking a timeout from life. He would intentionally remove himself from everything and, so, and everybody so he could strengthen his spirit and know his Father's will for his life. If you want to know the Father's will for your life, and you don't know it, and, you, and you, you know your life is busy, you have to take a time out and get away. It's okay to get away. It's, it's okay to be by yourself and just spend time in prayer and, and doing things. You know what? That's what I have to do. Or if I don't do this stuff, I'm not going to be prepared. I'm not going to know what God, God wants me to bring each week or teach upon each week, right? Raise your hand if you got something in your I'm in your life right now. You're waiting for God to answer it. So we got saying timeouts would be great for you guys because if you're not doing it already, but you know what? It's good. It's God. You're more likely to hear from Go Michigan. <laughs> you're good. You're more likely to hear from um, Yeah, Michigan one. Yeah, that's right and stuff though. We're in Michigan, we're in East Lansing. They got beat. They got beat down Michigan. <laughs> Um, no, we're, we're more, you're more likely to hear um, to, no, to to find out God's will for you if you take a time out and God give give God an opportunity to get into your life and and, 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 and speak to you and impress things on your heart. And it doesn't happen any other way. You have to take a time out from life because life gets busy. Life is hectic, especially with kids. But I don't believe it's just with kids. I believe every, all seasons of your life are always busy. You always got something. Some people, because I, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, when you have young kids and stuff, it's real busy. It is real busy, but it's just as busy when you get older, when you're middle aged, when you're older, right? You got things to do. 
So we see that timeouts are good for us. I see it as a time to get recalibrated. You know, let's be let's be real. Our 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 our, our calibration gets thrown off at times. And that's why we have to get recalibrated. And because because it, the reason I say that our calibration gets thrown off um, um, at times in life is because our life often hits us when we're not expecting it or, or ready for it. It punches, you know, life, you know, life is life is unforgiving. It's unforgiving. It, you know, you, one minute you're okay, the next minute, man, you got like a punch came from nowhere. You're just like, man, I didn't see that. I didn't see that that punch coming. But this is this is why. We have to stay close to God at all times. It's not, it's not aspirational. It's a necessity. And a big part of this is carving time out of our day like Jesus did while, while he was on earth. He knew, Jesus knew the importance of time out. And he wants us, his church, his follow, individual followers, his church, his this country, the whole nation, the whole world, to embrace this also. The power of timeouts. Amen. Amen. All right, if you could bow your heads. Dear God, we thank you for today, God. We, you know what, God, I just, you know, I, I want to thank you, God, for just, you know, inviting Catherine and I to the, to that, to that conference equipped. I came, I come back, I came back, I feel refreshed. I feel like I'm ready to just to put my boxing gloves and go in a couple of rounds with Mike Tyson. You know what? And, and, and God, just thank you, God. And just I feel like I, I just you you added some gasoline to my fire. I'm already you know I'm already passionate and everything. But God, you just man, you amped it up. But God, I just I just thank you for this message, God. I, I just pray that it just it hit everybody who was watching, everybody here that was you know able to come to the um come to Lansing Calvary. And right now, I just want to ask I just want to ask the congregation right now, and the people online now, um, if and I think you've already answered this, but if you you know, if you just feel like, you know what, I just need to, um, you know, I just feel like I just need to, I, I, I need a time out. I need, I need some answers to some questions that only God can answer. Not my neighbor, not my parents, not my, my uncle, my cousin, my second cousin. I want you to raise your hand. Okay. I want to pray for you. All right, dear God, I just, you know, God, I just, I, 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 I ask that everybody who raised their hand, the people that raised their hand on Facebook, God, that you would um, give them the ability to, to, to um, carve off, car, carve out time in their life. Car, make, give them margins in their life where they can just seek you, seek your will, seek your face, and experience you. Because that's the only way we're going to really know, truly know what you want us to do. Yes, it can come through people, but you know what? We can. We don't have to ask people. We don't have to have people pray for us. We can do it ourselves, and we can get the answer right from you, from the from the Creator, from the the God of the universe. So, God, I pray that you know all these all the people that raised their hand, God, that you you know what you would answer their prayers. You would tell them what direction that they that they need to go, that you want them to go, that you would guide their paths. God, make it make it obvious to them. Leave nothing to, leave nothing, leave nothing um, um, without any type of, uh, any type of, uh, um, of questioning. Make it clear as day, clear as, run, uh, as, as water that's clean. God, I know you will. We thank you, God, for, you know, we just thank you, God, for being who you are. We thank you for just, you know, for just being with us every day. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to worry about because we know that you're with us and we are good. Amen. All right, right now, I want to ask anybody right now, um, if you passed away today, if you, if you happen to take your last breath, do you know where you would go? Bible says heaven or hell. It's pretty simple. Peanut butter and jelly, heaven or hell. So I, I just want to ask, I want to ask people online, people here and stuff like that, if you don't know where, where you would go if you took your last breath and you want to know where you want to, where you, where you are, you could go, I want you to raise your hand. I'm basically asking you if you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. All right. I'm trying to think what he said. Somebody said something at this conference. Um, 
can't remember what he said. He said something about like, you know, you know, you, you just you better be ready and stuff like that because there's gonna be a lot of neighbors. Anyway, I don't know. I'm just thinking. I don't even know what I'm. I don't know. But I, I just, I'm just saying. You know what? We have opportunities. We have opportunities every week. We have opportunities. You know, to come to the Lord and stuff. You know, and it's just like, you know what? You cannot take. You cannot take things for granted because you don't know what's going to happen to you when you walk out this building. You don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. You don't know if you're going to wake up, uh, go for, take a nap tonight or today and, and wake up or not. So you know what? You cannot play with fire. You have to be, you know, you have to be ready because if God comes back, you're not ready, you're not going. If you die today, you're not, you haven't get, uh, made Jesus Lord of your life, you're not going. It's not time to play. This isn't time to play church. It's not time to play, you know, just play, uh, try to act like, you know what, act like you're this Christian or whatever, but not be saved. Yeah. The Bible is very clear. So I want to, I just, um, I like, you know what, I want to pray for people online that might be watching that maybe you haven't given Jesus, um, made Jesus the Lord of your life. And this is a salvation prayer. This is a, pr a prayer of repentance, a prayer of asking Jesus to be Lord of your life and confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So if this is you online, I'd like you to repeat this after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I ask for forgiveness. I repent from all my sins. Right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that, that, um, that God raised him from the dead. Father God, fill me with your spirit so I can know you, serve you, and follow you the rest of my life. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you, said this, if you said this prayer and you asked Jesus to become Lord of your life, congratulations. You made the best decision of your life. Um, right now, I would encourage you. We'd love you to come here and walk with you. We'd like to disciple you. Jesus, this, Jesus had disciples. He taught them the ways of, of the kingdom. We wanted to do the same thing for you. So if you'd like to come, if you'd like, if you, if you'd like uh, we would love you to join our church. I'd love to, to come here and join us. Um, if you need to get a hold of us, we, um, get on our website. You can send us a message. You can email. Um, whatever you need to do, just reach out to us. I'm saying Jesus always reaching out to people. And, we're, and we, are, we are the church of Jesus, so we're reaching out to people too. So reach out. We will meet you. All right. The rest of us right here, if you have any prayer needs right now, raise your hand. If you, if you need prayer for anything, raise your hand. Okay. All right. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're going to uh, in service in uh, about two minutes. Uh, two minutes. I'm going. I'm like, I like to say this benediction prayer. It's a prayer of blessing that I always say at the end of every service. And after that, um, we're going to go downstairs and then we're going to eat. So I think everything's right. I think it's ready. So I think it's lots of food. So hopefully you're hungry and you know get the grub on. All right. So this is from Numbers 6, 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you this week. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you this week. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace, his peace this week. Dear God, we, we, we thank you for today, God. We, um, we thank you for being able to allow us to come to your house. Um, God, I, I want to pray for divine appointments this week, God. I, God, I pray that you just show us divine appointments, appointments where we can just, um, where we, we can just um, talk to people. We can pray for people. We can just inter interact with people on your behalf. I pray for these moments, God. I pray that, you know, you make us, that we're aware of these moments, aware of these opportunities that are right in front of us. Many times there's opportunities right in front of us. And sometimes we fail to see because we're not looking. Our eyes are open. So God, open the eyes of our heart. God, we thank you for what you're doing here in Lansing, Calvary. We thank you for what you're doing in each one of our lives. You know what? I, I talk to people, God, and, and people are, they're, you know, they understand what the mission is. It's to impact the, the world for your kingdom. And people are doing that here. So God, continue giving them boldness. Give them them confidence. God, to, to do everything that you called them to do in every situation. And we thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. All right.